Hello and welcome, my name's Darren and welcome to the lesson. This is a two-part series looking at the remix effects. In this video I lift the hood on everything it can do and in the next video I use the track I created for my quick sampler lesson. The link is somewhere, you can check it out. Sharing some of the ways I'll be using the remix effects for sound design, adding movement to drum parts and using it to get ultra creative with your vocals. Let's check out how to use this plugin in this lesson. If you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe button, I'd be massively grateful. So let's dive into the plugin. Kind of basic function is to load on the stereo output so that you can then in real time process several different effects at the same time. But of course you can load it onto an individual track and we'll look at that later on where you can use it for sound design, adding more movement to your music as an inspirational tool to create new and interesting sounds. You've got a series of sliders uh, you've got a gate and a down sampler, two reverse buttons, two scratch buttons, and then two stop buttons like a record player stopping. Two X and Y pads that you just click and drag around the pad. And of course, these can all be used via your mouse, a trackpad, or assignable controllers. Now, with the buttons, also with the X and Y pad, you have hidden parameters through the settings button. So, for example, the reason why you have two reverse buttons is because they are assigned to different timing values. So, you can see here we've got an eighth note, or there you've got a sixteenth note, and you can change these to whatever suits the program material that you're working working with. So the idea is that a track is playing and you use these different pads and buttons to create interesting effects just like a DJ would. Let's take a look at some of the functions in a little bit more detail to help you fully understand. If you click on the menu option button here you've got the option of six different effects that you can choose. Now you can't have two effects at the same time. So if I click on the repeater button here, if I click filter, watch what happens on the left hand side, it will flip over to the repeater. That's a shame in some ways because you could have parallel filtering or filtering in sequence, but it doesn't allow you to do that. So let's take a look at the filter first of all. Now that what happens with the filter is it doesn't start at zero and then go to 100%. I would almost think of it as the center line being zero, and then you've got filtering off to the right and filtering off to the left. The resonance, however, is zero to 100. As you go up, you're adding more resonance. As you're coming down, you're adding less. But with the cutoff, you have a cutoff filter this way from here to here, but you also have a cutoff filter from here to here as well. Now what will happen as I cut to the right, as I sweep up, I will have a low cut filter. So that's really cool. If you're working with a whole track and you want to create a high cut sort of drop down, you can do that really easily. And then you could build the whole thing back up with adding some resonance. Now there's another little trick with the filter that you can do and that is with the settings menu you get two types of filter modes you get classic and fat spout with the ph if i bring up channel eq and put the low cut filter on now if i increase the q you can see that you get this nice wide ish bump here if i change the slope that bump has got slightly narrower. If I make it at a 12 dB slope, you see we've got a nice wide Q here. You get a slightly different tonal character if the slope is very sharp. So you're still creating the same effect, it's still a filter sweep, but the difference is that the actual Q factor and the slope of the filter are different and that creates a slightly different characteristic. And you have two different characteristics that you can choose from. There is another thing that I wanna show you with the X and Y pads that's really, really useful. And that is you have this lock button. 
So if I click the lock button to on and then I just click anywhere in the X and Y pad, what will happen is it will latch on to the pad and it will stay on for as long as the lock is activated or I can deactivate it by clicking the reset button. So let's say I want to record multiple parts of the plugin live at the same time or just hold something in position. The lock function allows me to do that. So let's say I want to do a low cutoff sweep and then use the repeater and then sweep back down to its original position. The lock function has allowed me to do that. Let's have a look at the repeater, which is essentially a stutter effect. You've got a vertical axis, which is the mix. On the horizontal axis, you've got your rate values, and each column represents a different note value. Quavers, eighth notes, semiquavers, sixteenths, demi-semiquavers, thirty seconds, and hemi-demi-semiquavers, sixty-fourths. nice machine gun effect on the end. Now with the settings menu you have the extra parameters that you can click on. Take a look at the straight notes plus triplets. Notice here the I've got this column active so this is going to be quavers. The next column when you have straight note plus triplet is a triplet column and then the next column is a straight note which will be 16th notes and then this column will be 16th note triplets. There's the quavers, now triplet, and then sixteenths, semi-quaver triplets. If you wanted to use a combination of straight notes and triplets, then you could quite easily do that with the repeater because you'll have a straight note and then a triplet, straight note, then a triplet. This button here is just straightforward triplets. And of course, obviously, you could change the mix level of this as you go. This is a really cool effect. You could create some really interesting sounds with. Basically, what this is, it's an LFO that has vintage filtering. So you can think of it as a filter that's continually moving up and down. You have exactly the same functions as you do with repeater, straight notes, straight notes plus triplet, or you could just have triplets. It basically sounds like this. Orbit's great if you want to add flanging and phasing effects. In fact, you can actually, from the settings menu, select either just a phaser or a flanger. You can mix the two together, which is really cool. It's similar to Wobble, where you have the depth amount and then the rate, of course, is in terms of tempo. Really, you're going to use this one to create nice sweeping sounds, I would say. And you can start at a low value with no depth and gradually move up. So you can get some really cool sounds going with that. The reverb pad has a number of different options. So the reverb color, dark, medium and bright. I guess there's some kind of EQing going on. So you get a different flavor to your reverb. I think that's really useful because what's great about this pad is you can change effects in real time, but you might not like the reverb that you've got. So having the option to change the color is kind of really handy. Also, you can use the lock function to lock the reverb in place and then gradually move it. So here's something you could try out. Let's say, for example, you want to have two sections in a song and the second section you want it to be slightly bigger. You could use reverb and filtering to make your music slightly bigger. So you could have a thinner reverb on the first section and a thicker reverb on the second section. The reverb could be on a vocal, it could be on a guitar, it could be on a synth, it could be on some drums. In my case here it's on a snare. And then the filtering, if you filter just a bit of the top end off, maybe in a verse, and then open that filter out going into a chorus, you're going to make the music stand up a bit more. You're going to make it sound a little bit bigger. So in this case, I've got it on a drum bus, but you could put it on guitars, synths, even go on vocals, things like that. Now with the snare, 
I'm not using loads of reverb time. I'm only using a small amount of reverb with the lock function on both filter and the reverb. And then when it gets into the second section, I'm just bringing the snare up in the mix a little bit. With the filtering, I'm filtering just a small amount top end off, no resonance. And then when we get into the second section, I just simply open the filter out. So you see there you get more reverb in the second section and a brighter mix. Another cool thing that you could do with reverb and delay is on a vocal, add some reverb and then gradually bring the reverb in and out on certain words, all the same with the delay. Tell me what you are going through. Tell me what you are gonna You could do, do it with delay. Tell me what you what are you going through. So you could create some really interesting delays and reverbs. For the delay, you get the same time options as Wobble and Orbit, where you can have straight notes, straight notes with triplets or just triplets. And of course, you have your feedback amount. So how many delays and then across the horizontal axis, the rate is the actual tempo of the repeats. So I think there's a ton of fun to be had with the Remix Effects plugin. In the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a whole mix and how you can use it to get creative by creating sound design with it, risers, that type of thing. We'll also look at using the Remix Effects plugin on drum parts to give your drums more movement and life. And we'll also look at it, how we can use it to process vocals and also some compression tricks as well. If you're interested in watching the next video, hit the like and subscribe button and click the bell as well because you'll not miss the video when it comes out. See you soon.